In this lesson, you'll learn how to define and use Android Virtual Devices, or AVDs. AVDs are software components that simulate Android smartphones and tablets and run your apps on those virtual devices on your computer. You'll learn how to define virtual devices and use them in testing and debugging your apps. At this point, you should have installed all the tools included in the Android Developer Tools Bundle either by installing them collectively in the bundle or individually. So please start Eclipse on your computer. Remember, referring to Eclipse at this point is the same as referring to the Android Developer Tools bundle, which runs on Eclipse. Follow along with me and your computer as we define and start up a virtual device. In Eclipse, bring up the Java perspective. If you don't see the Java tab, use the Windows drop-down menu open perspective, and Java. Now look along the row of buttons at the top. You should see one that looks like a miniature phone, like I have here. Click on it, and this will start the Virtual Device Manager, and you should see a window like this. You won't see any devices defined in yours yet. I have a few here on my computer I've already defined. So, to get started defining a virtual device, click on the Device Definitions tab. This is a list of basic device definitions you use as a starting point to define your virtual devices. To help understand your device options, let's take a look at screen dimensions and densities options using this graphic. A display is made up of pixels, which are in turn made up of red, green, and blue subpixels. A display has a horizontal and vertical dimension in pixels. There's a large range of display sizes from very small to very large. Mobile displays on smartphones and tablets don't reach to the larger dimensions of televisions. However, Android does now support TV displays, although we won't be addressing those in this course. This graphic shows a number of ways to look at screen size. One is the major groupings of VGA, XGA, and HD. VGA, or Video Graphics Array displays, range from 160 by 120 pixels to 1024 by 600. XGA, or Extended Graphics Array displays, range from 1024 by 768 to 7680 by 4800. And High Definition, or HD displays, range from 640 by 360 to 7680 by 4320. Within these ranges, there are a large number of dimension standards described by the qualifiers you see here, such as quarter, quad, half, wide, full, etc. To see all the details about these dimensions, click on the link to the wiki article on display resolutions below you'll see an immense list of acronyms and associated dimensions. I'll leave it to you to read through this article if you're curious about all the details. In addition to screen dimensions, Google has defined categories of screen densities, such as low, medium, high, extra high. I show TV DPI just for completeness because you'll see these devices show up in the Virtual Device Manager. As I said, we won't be addressing Android TV apps in this course. Click on the Device Displays link below to see the Android page related to these definitions. In their graphic, the website shows some typical screen sizes, a couple of different smartphones, a medium-sized tablet, maybe 7 inches, and a large tablet, maybe 10 inches, and they discuss the density groupings. In the course lessons, we'll be addressing strategies and coding methods to have your apps run and display well on the full range of screen sizes and densities. With all this in mind, let's go back to the Virtual Device Manager. In the Device Dimensions tab, you'll see devices described by some key characteristics. For example, let's look at the 5.1-inch WVGA smartphone. It has a 5.1-inch screen measured diagonally that is 480 pixels wide by 800 pixels high with medium density and 512 megabytes of RAM. If we double click on it, 
we see an expanded set of characteristics that are definable. Notice down at the bottom, it says that only user-created devices are editable. So to create a custom device for ourselves, we'll click on Clone Device. We now have a 5.1-inch WVGA device with the little user-created icon here. If we double-click on that device, we now have a device with characteristics we can change. So let's change the name to Course 5.1-inch WVGA. Notice that there are a number of specifiable device characteristics. On the Android website, there's a page that explains each of these. On the Device Screen Dimensions and Densities graphic, click on the Managing AVDs link. This page can be found on the Android site under Workflow and Setting Up Virtual Devices. Click on Hardware Options to the right which takes you down to a section on the page with a brief description of each device feature. Now let's go back to the Virtual Device Manager. We can also clone the device we just created. And we're now going to create an Android Virtual Device, or AVD, by clicking on Create AVD. In that screen, we're going to select for the target Android 4.1.2 API Level 16. Make sure you click on the Android 4.1.2, not Google APIs. And for the CPU, the Intel Atom x86, because we want to take advantage of hardware acceleration on your computer. Also check the Use Host GPU Emulation option. And we'll leave the rest of this the way it is. Click OK. Let's take a quick look at the emulator and GPU support. Google has recently enhanced their support of the emulator and GPUs, or graphic processing units. You can read the details about this on the Android blog at the link shown on this graphic. And now back to the Android Virtual Devices tab, and you'll see your virtual device on the list. If you need to change any characteristics, you can edit the device, make any changes, and click OK. And now back briefly to the Device Definitions tab, and you can see Course 5.1-inch WVGA is now used by AVD, our Android virtual device, for Course 5.1-inch WVGA. So that shows the link between the Device Definition and the Android virtual device. Now, before we start the virtual device we just created, we're going to install hardware acceleration on your computer. Let's go back to the graphic on screen dimensions and densities and click on the link at the bottom for hardware acceleration. This takes you to a web page on the Android site that explains how to enable acceleration for a variety of computer and operating system types. The instructions are clear and there are too many options for me to go through here. If you scroll down, you see the instructions. One tip, when you do run command line operations on a PC, you might need to execute them in administrator mode. So I'm going to have you pause the course, read the instructions for your hardware configuration, and enable acceleration. Do this now and return to this lesson. Welcome back. I hope you had success in enabling hardware acceleration. If you weren't able to do it for some reason, your virtual devices will still run They'll just be more sluggish than if you had acceleration enabled. Now the exciting part. We're going to start the virtual device. First, bring up your virtual device manager in Eclipse, as I have. Select the device and click Start and Launch. Give it a minute or two, depending on the speed of your computer. And be patient. If you don't have hardware acceleration or you have a slower computer, it could take a little while for the virtual device to start up. You should see the screen as you see it now on my computer. If you do see an unlock screen come up first, just slide it as you would on a regular phone to unlock the screen. Now click on the App Menu button at the bottom. It's giving us a little tip here to add an app to your home screen, touch and hold it, just as you would on a real device. So we'll click OK to this tip. And you should see a number of app icons appear. So to test out the device, let's click on the API Demos icon. 
and you'll see a list of demo categories. Let's try the animation group, and then bouncing balls, and click on the screen to activate the balls. In a lesson coming up shortly, you'll see how to run your apps on the virtual device. That's the end of this lesson. What you might want to do now is have some fun with your virtual phone. Go back to the Demos folder, click the Back button, again, and check out more of the demos. And enjoy your new virtual phone.